Dobry dzień. So, um, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, all the organizers of this event, especially Mikhail for uh, um, communicating with me. From, actually, I just came from the Philippines yesterday. I arrived in Vienna, Austria, and uh, um, <laughs> one ride. So I went to here just yesterday. And of course, um, I'm very thankful to the people of Slovakia for welcoming a Filipino and an Asian to your country. A, be a very beautiful and amazing country. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, um, um, I'm very amazed and overwhelmed with uh, speaking in front of you as a Filipino, as an Asian in front of um, Slovak. So that's very overwhelming. I'm very thankful. And uh, of course, um, as a first, uh, um, fascinating, uh, um, I think, uh, geographical story about the Philippines and its difference in the in Europe, especially in Central Europe. The difference is that when you're in the Philippines, if you want to go to another country, so we will ride a ship. Um, for for instance, in going in Malaysia, Indonesia, going in Singapore or Hong Kong, you need to go ride the ship or ride the plane. While in here. In Central Europe, just uh, yesterday I'm in Vienna and a one-hour ride, uh, I am in, in Slovak Republic. So that's very amazing. Yeah, so, uh, um, so now let's start. Dobry dzień. And uh, first of all, um, I want to give you an outline of what I will um, discuss. I will uh, share, you, share to you. Um, for this 45-minute uh, presentation. First of all, I'll share to you my country. So we have uh, the, flag, the flag on the center, which uh, represents our country. That's, uh, we have three stars and the sun. The three stars uh, represents the three big islands in the Philippines, which is Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I'm from, um, I think, north, which is uh, Luzon Island, a very big island. And uh, we have uh, the blue and the red. And so next is, I want to tell you that um, we have a lot of islands, beautiful beaches, and a lot of wonders. Uh, so if you want to be uh, in the Philippines, it's all about the beaches and also the, uh, the religious locations, the architectures of Spain, which are uh, one of the colonizers of the Philippines. So. We also have that um, upper in the middle um, and at the top, the, the chocolate hills. We call those chocolate hills. So that's um, one of the wonders of the world. I, I don't know the year, I think 2011 or 2012. And in the lower left, that's a main, ma uh, th that's a man-made uh, Banawe rice terraces. So we can plant rice on uh, steep mountains. So the Ifugao, an indigenous people in the Philippines, did it like a uh, ladder, uh, rice terraces, so they can plant rice. Um, for all you know, the staple food of the Filipinos is rice. We eat rice as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So next is um, the people I'll share to you um, how very uh, happy the Filipinos are, and uh, of course the well-known traits of the Filipinos. I also I'll also share that to you, and of course uh, my university. That's, um, that's called Central Luzon State University, where I graduated and where I am teaching right now. <laughs> um, for all you know, um, at age 23, I'm an instructor of Central Luzon State University. And in addition to that, who am I? So let's start with who am I? And um, I'm, an, I'm a certified public accountant by profession and a public servant in the Philippines by passion. So I, how can I say that I'm a public servant? I have um, a lot of advocacies and um, I want to share some to you. First of all, I want um, an advocacy with uh, education for the youth. I want the youth to be constantly motivated, constantly in inspired of, um, of learning, of having good education. I want them to have quality education by, um, to, for them to surpass the level of mediocrity. So um, in the Philippines, it's hard to, to have this quality education. I know many, many um, countries in Europe has free education from I think preschool up to their graduation. In the Philippines, um, it is becoming more, um, less and less expensive. But still, if you want a quality education, the private schools um, they are uh, they are providing education um, 
by just uh, but you will pay ex um, high amount. So those uh, top universities um, will uh, uh, will be very costly for the parents of these children. It's not free. So, but that's a platform of our uh, president. They want to change it to a free education in the future. I hope so. And then uh, another thing is that um, I I am an advocate of uh, work-life balance for. Uh, for employees and study life balance for students, I'm organizing fun run, color run, and a lot of things like uh, basketball league because uh, it's very famous in the Philippines. And also, um, I'm uh, an advocate of uh, support for the farmers and agriculturists, uh, the marginalized sector of our um, country. And next, um, I'm a motivator and uh, inspirer for those aspiring CPAs or the certified public accountants in the Philippines. So I'm a teacher for um, the far primary subjects, touch, um, of course, are accounting subjects. My priority is taxation and I also lecture about finance and entrepreneurship. We let students uh, do um, innovate things to provide new products for our country that is very marketable and profitable for them to, to, to also enhance their entrepreneurial uh, abilities in the future. And uh, I'm a self-proclaimed traveler. Actually, it's my first time here in Europe, um, but um, I already been to six countries in, in Asia. So um, Singapore and Malaysia, for example. And so I'm an accounting instructor and also um, um, on the left side, I'm lecturing about how to be an agripreneur. That's very interesting because we um, relate agriculture with entrepreneurship. So um, by having this agricultural lands, they should have known how to market those uh, products by having this entrepreneurial ability. So agripreneurship. And of course, I'm doing a lecture on taxation on the right side of the, of the slide. Of course, um, in addition to that, study life balance for my students and on, or the, on the left side we let them participate on dancing activities um, on contests for dances and on the right side um, <laughs> so those are not filipinos we have international students we do um, ASEAN night ASEAN night or the association of southeast asian nations night so um, they are performing their native dance and on the lower side um, I have a picture with my students who did their um, um, product exposition of their non-food and food products. So we are helping our students to develop or, and grow um, holistically, not only in the four corners of the room, but also we let them have activities that can enhance their entrepreneurial abilities. So next is, uh, uh, those, uh, that picture is, um, um, I'm with the uh, uh, um, children of the of the indigenous people. They are called the Acta. We do um, workshops for the people in the in the mountains. Um, so what what do we do? We do workshops. That's an extension activity because we let them uh, learn. And uh, in the future, um, we want them to do. To, to do it independently so they can profit from that activity in the future. So also in here, I, I am with my mentor, Sir Dr. Reyes, a well-known mushroomologist and a biologist. So we do a um, consulting activity. I'm with bookkeeping while he is with the science part. So um, we, um, an agriculturist um, consulted with us. Because um, he will be doing a mushroom farm in his, in his backyard. So that's very interesting. And of course, Overdrum Traveler. So that's a famous Haji Lane in Singapore. Um, the, one of the best airports, Changi Airport in Singapore. And on the lower right, um, in Malaysia. So basically, my, my reason for traveling is learning um, new perspectives in life, new concepts, and new ideas in life. So, um, I really want uh, communicating with people of different cultures and also learning their, how they uh, do things in life. So, so much for who am I, sorry. So next is my country, the Philippines. I have here 
symbolism, pre-colonial Philippines, Spanish colonization, and also tourist destinations. So, um, first of all, symbolism. Who is our national hero? He is Dr. Jose Pirizal. Uh, at first, he was um, uh, he was uh, chosen by the, the Americans. So, first of all, I want to tell you now that we have three colonizers. First uh, is Spain, and the second is USA or the Americans, and third is the Japanese. So, we are colonized by Spain for 333 years, starting 1543, I think. So, um, that is how the, um, Dr. Jose Pirizal was, uh, was chosen as the national hero by the Americans by popular acclamation. So, he does things very silently by just writing. He, do, he can do revolution by just writing, by letting people know that what the colonizers do in the Philippines is wrong, we should be independent. So that, he, that is how we do things. So next symbolism is our national animal. So our national animal is Philippine Carabao. What does it symbolize? It symbolizes how hard the Filipinos work, even in the offices, even in the farms, in the agricultural lands. So they, the Filipinos are very hardworking. So that's the symbol of the Philippine Carabao. And next is the national bird. So the, so the national bird is the Philippine eagle. So um, it symbolizes, I think, resiliency and focusing on uh, what you dream, what's your goal in life. So it symbolizes how Filipino focuses on their goals in life. Next symbolism, I have six. <laughs> so I think uh, Philippine mango is for how sweet the Filipinos are. So, uh, because. Uh, um, based on uh, my friends from Australia and uh, in Europe, um, they say that how we how we speak our national language it's uh, like sweet. But sometimes I had this Australian friend. Uh, he told me that how we how we speak is like Jewish. That's how we speak in just like how um, for an example, it's afternoon right now. So. Magandang hapon. So, magandang hapon. Magandang hapon, mga kaibigan. So, that's um, good afternoon, my friends. So, yeah. Yes. So, um, next is the national flower. That's um, how, I think that that's Sampagita. Sampagita. So, that symbolizes how, um, how clean, I think, our intentions of being sociable. When some tourists come to the Philippines, we're very sociable and yes, very friendly. It's very hospitable in the Philippines. Yes, and the uh, national tree is not a tree. That's how strong and firm the Filipinos are. Even through adversities, even through difficult times, thus the Filipinos are resilient. They are um, sometimes they are smiling even with uh, waist deep flood. <laughs> they are smiling. I'll show you a picture later about that. So, Philippines before the colonization. So, we have pre-colonial Philippines and Philippines during the colonization of the Spaniards, of the, of the um, Americans and the Japanese. So, first the pre-colonial, first is clothing. The clothing of the pre-colonial Filipinos or the men, they have on the top it's um, kangan, kangan. So, next on the bottom is um, bahag. Bahag will show the legs and the thighs of the Filipino men. Um, it is still worn in the Philippines, but only on the mountains, the indigenous people. The Ifugao wore, wore still wore um, that traditional clothing. And uh, next is we have putong on the top of the head. Next is for the women. The women's dress is very um, conservative. It's like the dress of a, of a man, but uh, longer, long sleeves with a very long, um, long bot bottom. So that's um, how uh, traditional women uh, wore their dress. So next is ornaments. So the ornaments, there is this place in Visayas. So we have three big islands in the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. That is represented by the three stars in our flag. In Visayas, there is this called Las Islas de Pintados, where the island of the painted people before the Spaniards came. So they are the people who are the tattooed people. So on the bottom, um, that shows um, the Filipinos likes wearing ornaments, even up to now. 
they like wearing ornaments. So, next is the houses of the Filipinos before colonization. That's very simple. It's where it's wood and nipa. It's wood and nipa. That's uh, how simple it is. And next is the social classes. We have the nobles or the gat or lakan and the freemen or maharlika and the dependents or alipin. So, first of all, the nobles are the highest class in the society back then. Next are the freemen. So they are the ones who can choose where to study. They can choose what to do in life. And then the, the workforce of the society is the, are the dependents. So how can you be a noble? How can, be, how can you be a free man or a dependent? That is um, almost 90% uh, up to 100% um, all about inheritance. So you can inherit being a noble. You can inherit being a free man or, and being a dependent. And next is the, the position of women in the society. Before the colonization, the, there is an equal position or um, loss or right between the men and the women. Actually, they can own their land before the colonization. They can own their land um, and name it on, uh, on their names. The, uh, and they have also the exclusive right to name their children. So, the men cannot uh, conflict the women about naming their child. So, it's the um, exclusive right of the women before the colonization. And next is marriage customs. This is very interesting because in the Philippines back then, um, it, is, it is easy to, to have to court your, uh, the, a girl, your fair lady. But it's, it is very hard because before pursuing the, your fair lady, you need to pursue their parents. So um, there, are, there are times that the man should chop wood for, the, for, their, for the family of um, his uh, fair lady. And there, there are times that, um, as you can read there, the man is even required to serve the, the, ch the girl's parents. He will chop wood, fetch water, and did other chores required of him. So. It will take patience and a spirit of dedication on the part of a man to win the hand of his fair lady. Um, up to now, I think there are still customs for that, but it is um, evolving, it is changing right now. Um, we are being, uh, um, I think, uh, influenced by many cultures now about having these marriage customs, this courtship. So, uh, what I can say now is the man in the Philippines is very respectful of women. So, um, in addition to that, there is this called dowry, where um, the family of the men will pay the family of the women because um, it's a ritual because they say they, the, a man should pay the, the parents of the women for carrying him up to womanhood. So, <laughs> that's also a very interesting topic. And uh, the Spanish colonization, actually, um, the first the man who discovered the Philippines is Ferdinand Magellan. Ferdinand Magellan. So there he is. Actually, Ferdinand Magellan is from Portugal. He is a Portuguese. And then, um, what's the story about uh, going to the Philippines? Portugal wants to um, discover Maluku or the land of the priceless spices in uh, Maluku uh, or Molucas, Indonesia. So he is in search of the priceless spices, and uh, um, first, first he went to the king of Portugal. He went to the king of Portugal, and the king of Port uh, he wants a support for her, his voyage into the into Maluku. But the king of Portugal refused. So uh, Ferdinand Magellan went to Spain. The king of Spain it was King Charles the First, and King Charles the First um, accepted with hesitation, with hesitation the offer of Ferdinand Magellan to find the priceless spices. Why I say with hesitation, the historians from the Philippines say it's with hesitation because the king of Spain gave uh, Ferdinand Magellan antiquated ships or old ships, five old ships. That is why they say that it is with, uh, just with sympathy or with hesitation. So um, Magellan's voyage was supported by the king of Spain. So. He received a royal instruction to sail directly to the Maluku and to bring back a cargo of priceless spices. 
So, how did they, they fare with their voyage? He sailed around the southern tip of South America across the vast Pacific Ocean after 98 days of sailing northwestward. So, instead of being in Maluku or the land of the priceless spices, he discovered the Philippines in March 17, 1521. Actually, the, the, um, the discovery of the Philippines will have its fifth centennial anniversary in 2021. So that's this, the fifth centennial anniversary of the discovery of the Philippines. And it is said that uh, the Magellan's expedition is a test of human endurance. Why? Because um, the army of Magellan, um, when they are in the Pacific Ocean for 98 days, they even, um, many, many, many told me that they even, the historians from the Philippines to, is telling the story that the army of Magellan even eat their garments and some will eat uh, biscuits with worms just to stay alive in the Pacific Ocean. That's, that's a test of human endurance. And Magellan did not, did not live to see the final completion of the first known voyage in history to circumnavigate the world. Why? Because he was killed by Lapu-Lapu in Mactan, Cebu, April 27, 1521. There is a conflict. I don't know the uh, true story behind that, so I won't share it to you right now. So, um, Magellan was killed by Lapu-Lapu, a tattoo of Mactan in Cebu, um, April 27, 1521. So, Mactan Cebu is very historical. Um, what are the discoveries of the expedition? First of all, um, it proved that the Philippines um, existed by discovering the Philippines and proved that the Earth was round because they circumnavigated the world and established the vastness of Pacific Ocean. They sailed there for 98 days and East Indies con could be reached by crossing the Pacific Ocean and lastly, Ameri Americas was really a landmass. So, um, this map shows their expedition. So, they started here and then went here to the Pacific Ocean. Then, as you can see there, the Maluku is um, on the southern part of the Philippines in Indonesia. Maluku, Indonesia. So, they went here and in Mactan, Cebu, this is where uh, Magellan died. And after after the death of Magellan, they, um, the, the survivors are 22 people, 18 Europeans, and four Malayans. They are Philippine natives, but they are uh, with Magellan because they are the ones who translated, they are translators for Magellan and uh, the Filipinos. So um, they went here, up to there. The, the, this is the Strait of Magellan. and. Um, they came back to tell the story. The, the 22 people came back to tell the story about the Philippines. So, and uh, for all we know, Philippines was named after the King of Spain, King Philip. King Philip. That is where Philippines came from. The name F Philip, King of Spain. So, uh, language similarities. We are colonized uh, 333 um, years by the Spaniards, so we have a lot of a lot of um, language similarities or word similarities. So first of all, administración in Tagalog, administración in Spanish, and it's administration in English. Next is viernes. Yesterday was viernes. Viernes in Spanish and Friday in English. Yesterday was Friday, and Tagalog diciembre. Three months from now, it's already December or December. December in Spanish. So if you go to the Philippines and you were called Guapo, you're a male and you were called Guapo, so you'll be very happy because you were, you were, you were handsome, right? Guapo. Ang Guapo. So that's handsome in English. And then next is Mesa. That's also Mesa. And uh, Brutas or Fruits. Then, trabajo. It's Saturday today, so there's no trabajo in the Philippines, most probably. That's work or job. So those are the language similarities. Next is the impact of the Spanish colonization. It's, first is the economic impact. I can show you that um, the, the Spaniards, these this fruits or the, 
these uh, commodities are not from Spain, literally. But they are the ones who, who um, introduced it to the Philippines. How? By the Manila Acapulco trade. Uh, Manila Acapulco trade was introduced to the Filipinos. Acapulco is in Mexico. And then the pictures of the trade is in the middle, the horizontal uh, pictures in the middle. So that's Manila Acapulco trade. So we have that um, commodities, avocado, guava, and uh, corn. So on the bottom, you have, it's, it's more of educational impact, but it's uh, related to economic impact by having these schools. His, uh, this school, this school, which is already 407 years old. That's University of Santo Tomas. You, you, can, you will see it in Santa Mesa, Metro Manila. That's the capital of the Philippines, Metro Manila. So, um, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not uh, really promoting, I'm Filipino, but I'm not really promoting Manila. So, if you go to the Philippines, I'm very proud that we have a lot of good islands, but I'm not really promoting Manila because it's very traffic in Manila. Who already came to the Philippines? Ah, okay, okay. So, there's very traffic in Manila, and uh, in the beaches, it's okay. Yeah. I think one problem is having an airport that's very near the civilization. When you ca come to Manila, the airport is Naia, and right after the airport, there's a lot of malls, a lot of establishments. So, um, in the islands, it is about three or four hours away from the airport, the civilization, or the hotels that is near the island. Yes. I'll show you later uh, pictures and one video of the island, an island I visited just three weeks ago. So here, the education impact. Actually, the, I, already, I, I only have one slide for the educational impact, but this is a big impact because during the colonization of the Spaniards, um, the girls were separated from the boys by their education because um, there are girls' schools and there are boys' schools. What is the difference? The girls' schools are um, taught with household chores, while the, may, the boys' schools are, um, are educated normally, just like having math classes, English classes, history classes. So that is the very reason why there is no equal equality between the, uh, male, uh, the girls and the boys during that colonization. Next is um, Christianization or the religious impact of the Spaniards. Um, um, right now, I can say tell you that uh, Philippines is a Catholic country. It's a Christian country. We are 86% Roman Catholics, and uh, we are about 90% Christians. So there are Muslims in the southern part in Mindanao. So in the Philippines, it is illegal to have divorce. So, but we have annulment. Annulment, but it's very complicated to to arrange an annulment. Yeah, but let's go. Let's not go deep into that. So we have mass. But the Spaniards uh, had mass baptism, which is their technique to easily colonize the Philippines. Why? They reason out that it is easier to um, to colonize the Philippines if the Filipinos will only have one belief. So if they baptize this into one belief, it is easier for them to be colonized. So we may agree, we might not agree, but that's their reason. And then reduction policies, there is zoning in the Spaniards times where they, uh, they uh, the scattered settlements um, was arranged into a bigger, more uh, convenient houses. Uh, place of houses, so an area, a bigger area. Next is the tourist destinations. So, of course, where did you <laughs> go? Where Where did you went? Yeah, yeah, none. 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 Where did you went in? Um, I went to Davao. Ah, Davao, yeah, Davao. Okay, yeah. I don't have pictures of Davao, but these are the ones um, I searched and. Uh, these are Google images, but not my, that's my image. It's in Coron, Palawan. You have a green lagoon, you have secret lagoon, you have big lagoon. So those, those are amazing uh, pictures. Actually, the main uh, attraction in Coron, Palawan is the shipwreck. 
Shipwreck meaning just snorkel for shallow water, and you can you can also all, already see the shipwreck, the shipwreck. And so there's a lot of uh, coral reefs, very beautiful. You're swimming with the fishes in the in Coron Palawan. That's the activity there. So Shargao is the number one surfing spot in the Philippines. So if you're a surfer or even a beginner, I'm not I'm not a surfer. I'm just a beginner. But I tried a one hour. A, a one hour um, session with a trainer and with a uh, surfboard is about, I think, uh, six euros. Six euros a one hour um, train. Uh, a one hour session with a trainer and with a surfboard. That's all you need. <laughs> six to eight, I think. Six to eight. Shargao. So, also in Shargao, you will see if you're not a surfer into surfing, you will have white sand beaches, the naked beach without any three trees so and then Boracay Bur Boracay is very uh, it has a story about two months ago it was closed for two months because um, it is reopened just uh, last week I think or last two two weeks ago it why is it why did they close it um, our president uh, initiated the closing of Boracay it, because it became too populated and too polluted in the in Boracay, and uh, it's the the dirt is already uh, in. Uh, we'll we'll go to this uh, very virgin island and very precious island, White Sand Beach. So they closed it for two months, rehabilitated the island, and it is now um, beautiful again. It's already clean, and they have rules now for being in Boracay. So that's a very good place. And next is Chocolate Hills. Those are not edible, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> so, uh, chocolate hills, um, very interesting with this uh, chocolate hills is that um, when it, we only have two seasons, the rainy season and the sunny season, or summer. Summer and the rainy season. So, during the summer, it's brown. It looks like really chocolate hills. And when it's rainy season, it's um, green because um, there are grasses, there are... Um, little trees, plants in the chocolate hills during rainy season. It's color green. Next is um, vegan. We have this Spanish architecture preserved in vegan. It's on the north part of the Philippines. Um, we have Calle Cresologo on the upper left, Calle Cresologo. And then upper right, and when you come to the Philippines, it will be very um, lucky for you to come during festivals. We, all, we have Many festivals, so that's a festival in the upper right. It's um, the people are very hospitable. They will, you will feel like you're at home when there are festivals. And then, in the lower left, they painted a carabao for the festival. And the in the lower right, you have kalesa, or um, you you will ride um, in the back of a horse with your own wheels. So kalesa, that's very traditional in the Philippines. They have preserved Spanish architectures in the Philippines. Next is Batanes. It's on the um, north, northmost islands in the Philippines. Why is it very interesting? Um, it's very interesting because the scenic view and of course um, Batanes is hit by typhoon about 15 times a year. So you can see the, in their uh, in their place that they are preserving their properties, their houses, by making very um, very firm houses. Those are made with rocks. Yes, and uh, the, the people even uh, wear clothes uh, like that, just to preserve them during typhoons. There are a lot of rainy seasons in Batanes. About, uh, I think, 70% a year. So, that's Batanes. And of course, um, but wonders of the world. First of all, the Banawi Rice Terraces. It's a wonder, uh, part of the seven wonders of the Philipp of the world. I think, few years back, few years back, that's a man-made uh, wonder, a man-made wonder. So the people of Benguet, the Ifugao people, um, did this um, just to just so they can plant rice on the mountain, and of course the underground river, the River is like a mirror of what you can see um, on the river. There's an underground river, like a cave. Yes. And uh, 
The Philippines must try. So, it's in Mactan, Cebu, where you can try the best lechon. Or, on the upper left, that's lechon. We grill a uh, wool pig during festivals, during birthdays, weddings. So, that's lechon. And, of course, have you known of the adobo? Filipino adobo? Adobo is either pork adobo or chicken adobo. So, in the Philippines, every province, has, every region has their own style of cooking adobo. But I had... I never tried an adobo that is not delicious. Every region, every province has, it, has their own adobo, but all, all are delicious. And of course, a typical on the upper left, let's see first the upper left, that's dangit or dried fish. That's a typical breakfast for Filipinos, dangit. So, um, how, do, how do they do the dried fish? They Boil it first into salt, with salt. Boil it in water with salt. And then um, dry it. Um, they will uh, dry it into, into the heat of the sun. And uh, that's it. They will uh, market it. And, uh, but, but before eating, you should uh, fry it first. That's the best thing that you will do to a dangit. And then on the lower right, <laughs> so those are chicken feet. Do they... Do, do they I, uh, do you have it here? Sorry, in the in Slovak, the chicken feet. No, none. So, uh, we are um, those are street foods, chicken feet. Those are street food, and uh, on the right side, those are what we call uh, the chicken chicken head. I've never tried <laughs> chicken head. So, in the Philippines, you want uh, a chicken. Every part of the chicken is, I think, they can eat it or use it so every part of the chicken there is no um there's no part of the chicken that is not useful for the filipinos yes those are street foods actually we call that in the philippines the head is helmet and the chicken feet is adidas with three stripes right the adidas it has three stripes so <laughs> adidas and helmet so what are others philippines must try halo halo that's a dessert. It's uh, with ice, and there's a lot of this, uh, sweets in it. Yes, that's very um, that's very delicious, even for the tourists. In this part, um, you may not be um, <laughs> you you might not try helmet or Adidas, but um, halo halo is a must try. It's uh, it is uh, um, from any part of the Philippines. Um, most probably, uh, most often, it will be served to you during summers because this, that's a cold treat. And next is, that's an uh, alcoholic drink that is a na native of the Philippines. It's from uh, coconut sap flower, lambanog, lambanog. That's an alcoholic. Um, I think you have heard about this one. Balut, <laughs> embryotic uh, duck egg. And you will eat it from its shell. The the you <laughs> you will not like it when you see it. Um, I I let my Australian friend try it. He 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 was like crying or <laughs> something. He he um, recorded my a video of me eating balut and he showed it to his friends in Australia. And uh, the, his Australian friend told him that you should have warned us. <laughs> we they are they I think vomited because of the video there's a a little very little chick, chicken in it yes and uh, that's very delicious for the Filipinos Vietnamese they there they also have it in Thailand but the Filipino balut is number one balut in the world <laughs> I'm very proud of it because it's very delicious but you you might not like it and uh, taho, that's a protein shake for Filipinos Every morning, there's a one selling it, Tahu. So that's how they call the, the customers, Tahu. So that's, those are the must tries. So just a rundown, lechon, chicken and pork adobo, um, dangit, chicken feet, chicken head, halu halu, lambanog, balut, and Tahu. Next is the Filipinos. So the Filipinos are, I, uh, put pictures of Filipinos. First of all, a, Filipi a Filipino American NBA player from Cleveland Cavaliers, Jordan Clarkson, 
an eight-time world champion, Manny Pacquiao, who is now senator of the Philippines. He's a politician, boxer, singer, basketball player. He does a lot. He does all the things in the Philippines. But right now, he's a politician and a boxer. And of course, um, our president, Rodrigo Duterte, the 2015 Miss Universe, Pia words back, who have a, a father, a German father, that's why words back. So Pia words back, and of course, from the Black Eyed Peas, Apple the App. So I can tell you um, a, stor uh, a story about Filipinos with our president. Um, our president has issue about first inflation because our money is getting inflated, prices are getting higher and higher, but the pay of the Filipinos is just like stagnant. So that's a big issue about how he manages things in the Philippines. And another issue is a uh, human right issue because um, there's, uh, th there is this war on drugs that is, he's doing in the Philippines that um, a lot of human rights experts are not, uh, not, they have negative reactions on the war on drugs. So next, uh, next slide is the well-known traits of the Filipinos. So first of all, hospitality. When you have uh, Filipino friends or relatives, when you go to the Philippines and there is just like a reunion, it's, it will be very festive. There will be like a festival in that house. Even though, you, they, even though the Filipinos don't have a lot of money, they will loan for just to have this festive, just to share, share a lot of food. Yes, that's how hospitable the Filipinos are. And if you may see, uh, there will be dangit, like the one I, I showed you a while ago, dangit as breakfast. But when visitors came, but when visitors come, there will be bacon, ham. Yeah, that's a very different. Uh, there's, there will be a big difference between Filipino breakfast without Filipino breakfast without visitors and Filipino breakfast with visitors. That's very, very different. So next is respect. So we have a high regard and respect for all the. Um, grandparents, the, our grandmother, our grandfather, they will, I, they will, uh, like for me, if I, I'll have a grandmother, I will hold it, her hand and put it to my forehead. That's the biggest sign of respect for the Filipinos. Next is close family ties. Actually, that's, that's my family. We, the Filipinos have this um, close family ties by um, having their children, their parents, and their grandest, grandparents, grand-grandparents in one house, in one home. So that's how close family ties. That is how we deal with having our family now. And practice of religion. We have this freedom of choice and then freedom of um, practice of religion in the Philippines. Whatever, whatever, whatever church or religion you might choose or you might practice, it's okay in the Philippines. And we're very religious. We, ha we, are, we go to the church once or twice a, a week. And then generosity and hopefulness. Every um, calamity, every um, adversity, every difficulties, we deal it with giving relief foods for those who are in need. We lend a helping hand. And then strong work ethic. Our staple food, which is rice, uh, um, is very hard to produce into your dinner table from planting, waiting to be harvested, harvesting. So strong work ethic. And loving and caring. We care and we love our um, grandparents until their dying days. There's no home for the aged in the Philippines. And resilience, that's a man uh, working on his house after just a tragedy. And optimistic mindset, actually being happy in the Philippines is just being contented of what we have. That's all. Even with adversities, even with difficulties, that's a difficult and a, <laughs> that's a, that's a big adversity. They are in a flooded area, this deep, and they're still smiling. Some will still drink beer, have liquor in the middle of a flooded, um, flooded area, I think. So those are Filipinos. Um, I think we are the third happiest country in the world 
on a Gallup survey just February of 2018. A United States survey. So, my university, the Central Sound State University, just a couple of slides. That's my university. That's the front view, the main gate of our university. So, we prioritize research, agriculture, and allied fields. And uh, um, that's it. Uh, we, uh, we value long life learning, disseminate and apply knowledge, technologies for poverty alleviation, environmental protection, and sustainable development. Uh, we have a strong workforce, uh, um, workforce who graduated masters and doctorate from inside and outside of the Philippines. So, and we have a pool of top notchers. That those are top notchers from the College of Veterinary Science and Medicine. Those are the doctors of the animals, veterinary science medicine. And of course, we have we uh, prioritize agrotourism, agriculture and tourism. In one word, agrotourism. We have the sunflower garden and uh, research about tilapia or a fish or a fish. What's our research about fish? It's only in our university where we can change uh, gender of uh, tilapia from male to female so all of the tilapia can produce offspring or they can produce tilapia. So, and uh, nature present preservation, that is lingap kalikasan in Tagalog or preserve nature. So na that's a nature preservation. And uh, we have this Rizal Park, our national hero. We have a statue of him. That's the first statue of Jose Rizal wearing barong, like this, a white barong. Because almost all of his statue, he is wearing a coat, Ameri Americana. So, that's tilapia ice cream. Have you tried an ice cream that is flavored with fish? <laughs> yeah, an ice cream flavored with fish. Yeah, that's very, very delicious in our university. <laughs> yeah. So, as a final thought, um, we must incalculate in our mind that this world is composed of different cultures, traditions, and languages. The moment that we embrace this diversity is the moment that we can uphold unity. Thank you. So, for any questions, that's uh, my uh, account. <laughs> so, can we have class picture or something? Can we have? <laughs> Yes, can I request for a class figure? Thank you, thank you very much.